Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I have a very special reaction for you guys. It is for the new Kanye West record, the Donda album. It is finally out, and uh, you know, I have uh, I've been wanting to do a reaction for this ever since it's been announced, and so... This is the video, uh, and just a couple caveats. I I guarantee if I play this if I play the songs on the video, uh, I will get uh, <laughs> it will get blocked and the video will not be able to go up. So uh, I will be listening to all the songs, obviously, but I'll be skip I'll be fast forwarding through the actual listening to the song, and you can hear my opinion on the song after. And uh, that's how this will go. And so this is uh, a crazy long thing. So this video is going to take a while to record, edit, talk about. I'm excited for it though. It's an hour and 48 minutes long, 27 songs. That's crazy. Uh, and the album art is just a black square. So, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of more, uh, different review style from those of you that know my Bowtide Media stuff. Uh, but, uh, I think this, this works just as well. So I'm interested to see how this is going to go. Uh, and if you're like, why, uh, are you talking about this Bowtide Media? Why should we care about your reaction? Um, and, uh, <laughs> I would first of all say uh, I've been a Kanye fan for a long time, actually. Uh, I primarily listen to EDM stuff, but uh, rap, hip-hop rap has always been my number two favorite, like, main overarching genre. And so I've been a big fan of rap for a long time, and I remember doing, like, a a song report to Jesus Walks in, like, grade six, and so I, I've been a huge fan of, uh, of Kanye for a while. Uh, also... Uh, as a little bit of a note here, uh, I'm also a Christian. Uh, I work at a church. That's part of my job. And so, uh, I think I will bring, uh, an interesting light, uh, to this project, uh, considering that, um, I am a Christian. And so, uh, this album isn't explicit. So, uh, I was actually, you know, good on you, Kanye, by, uh, at least for two albums, keeping to your word of kind of have, having more, uh, uh I don't know the word spiritual album. I mean, it, just because it's not explicit doesn't mean it's spiritual, but um, I'm interested. I'm interested to see what this is going to be. Uh, very, very intrigued. And, uh, you know, let's uh, let's get listening to it. So uh, here we go. This is uh, Donda Chant. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> that was Don to Chant, uh, the interlude to the uh, album, or not the interlude, the prelude. Uh, it was 52 seconds of uh, a woman saying Donda. Um, so <laughs> that was it. Uh, there really wasn't anything else to it. Um, I mean, that feels like a very Kanye thing to do. And so, uh, yeah. The, I'm not going to say a ton about this. There really isn't much to say about it. So let's jump into uh, the second track, which is uh, Jail. Okay, uh, that was Jail, the first uh, the first real song I with the album. Uh, something I, I need to stress that I, that I need to emphasize. Um, I have not heard anything anything about this album. Uh, I don't know how it's rated. I don't know if people love it. I don't know if people hate it. I haven't listened to any of the live streams. I wanted to save all of my initial reactions to, to, for this, for these moments. So I have literally, I know nothing about this. I, I didn't do any research beforehand. I didn't look up what the scores were for this album like right away. I know nothing. Um, so I'm completely blind. Uh, yeah, who knows? Um, okay, jail though. Uh, it's woo. Uh, that's a that's a nice starter of a song to like really start off the album. Uh, the that kind of what was the deep uh, guitar distorted guitar was a really nice all throughout the song. Uh, Jay Z's verse was solid. I, I from what I from the little bit I heard, I, I think there was something about him recording one of these verses like right after the live stream or right before live. Stream. I can't remember. There was lots of last minute stuff, and so I think that might have been one of them. Uh, I am looking at the lyrics while uh, this uh, <laughs> while I listen to the songs. Um, I'm on Genius listening or l looking at the lyrics, and so pretty solid stuff. Uh, I I love the metaphor here of jail and being bound to um, like. Christ and the spirituality of that and how uh, it said God going to post my bail tonight and how obviously Christ died for our sins and so that's the um, that's the big metaphor he's making here and so 
Not a bad song. Um, the end part was super, uh, what's the word? Like minimal slash uh, raw. Like it sounded like almost like Foley. Like it was someone like hitting like a utensil and like a table or something like that. It was um really interesting uh, take of a song, especially that, that last section. So uh, Kanye's vocals were processed and they felt like they were a little farther back in the mix than I would have liked. Because um, Jay-Z came in like strong and crisp and clean and Kanye was, when he had his actual verses, it felt like it was... um. A little more detached from the song so uh stylistically I, I didn't think it was that bad but uh you know solid song solid song to start uh i don't think that's going to be like my absolute favorite by f yeah uh, we'll have to see what the rest of the stuff is like so uh here is uh god breathed <laughs> okay uh track number three god breathed um Wow, uh, another kind of fun song that's that's not too insane, I would say. Uh, so that intro uh, feels like it's straight off of Yeezus. Uh, it's just like strong and gritty and kind of in your face. Um, and I can feel that for sure. Uh, the whole song got this like powerful, minimalistic bass line all throughout, which is uh, pretty crisp and clean. And uh, I'm a fan. And uh, like I said about the last song, uh, Jail, about how uh, Kanye's vocals feel a little uh, detached or more distant than the actual, or that in than anything else in the mix. Um, I think that might just be the style for this record uh, because I'm feeling it a little more on this one too. And so. Maybe it just might take some getting used to in uh, Kanye's vocals here. But uh, yeah, I, I, I do feel that they're a little more distance, but maybe that's a kind of a stylistic choice. Um, so maybe I'll get used to it, but it's not awful. But uh, the song, so it's kind of all about uh, what God breathed is uh, that all scripture is God breathed. And um, it was written by man, but uh, also, or what's the quote is written by man, but uh, uh Breathed by God is essentially the idea of it, um, or uh, ordained by God and kind of stuff. And um, yeah, so uh, he's obviously taking the metaphor there, where uh, how Scripture is God breathed, and how this project is God breathed, and how uh, you know, the ups and downs of the production and all that happened along the way. That this is uh, this is what I guess God wanted with this project um, is what he's kind of proclaiming here, and so. Yeah, uh, it had a nice little kind of uh, uh, like serene, almost like divine finale of like the last two minutes of the track. Uh, it did feel a little long, uh, I think, um, but it did feel like one of those sections where someone's like, I, I picture it and they're in like a Catholic hall or something like that, or they're in the big cathedral and they're like sitting at one of the benches and praying and like you, the song's playing, there's like a light beam coming in through the stained glass and it's like, that's what I picture with this um, la this last section. So uh, yeah, a solid song. Um, nothing has absolutely blown me away, but I still think it, it's really solid right now up to this point. Um, two full songs in and uh, I'm, I'm impressed with, with what there is. Uh, miles miles better than jesus is king uh i i like the record for what it was and what it kind of stood for um but uh <laughs> it wasn't uh it wasn't the greatest uh it wasn't the greatest lp so i did enjoy it but um this is already i think miles better than jesus is king so uh here we go with uh track number four uh off the grid <laughs> Okay, uh, off the grid. Um, whoo, that thing had some heat to it. Uh, I was a huge fan of that track. Um, huge, huge fan of that track. That was a, a ton of fun. Um, yeah, okay, production was absolutely fire on that. I loved every second of it. It was uh, gritty and also clean, and it was, uh, it just packed such a punch and so much power. So huge fan of that. Uh, Verse-wise, or lyrical-wise, um, not the biggest Playboy Cardi fan, and so it, I just thought his verse was pretty meh. Uh, and especially even more meh when he only has like, what, eight lines. Uh, and then Fivio, which who I've never heard of before, Fivio Foreign, um, comes in with like 50 lines. And then Kanye with like uh, 30 or something like that, like or maybe even 40. Like he just goes on for what, like two minutes it feels like, and just packing heat the whole time. It was loving what he was saying. Uh, the flow was great. He felt like he didn't let up for so long. And and same with Kanye. I think Fabio did a little better there, but oh man, uh, great introduction to Fabio is, is someone I've never heard before. So 
Um, chorus I thought was okay. Uh, it's is kind of is kind of little fun stuff he does, like the just repeats over and over again, and especially the line at the end with um, uh, some say Adam can never be black because a black man would never share his rib. Uh, just kind of the fun comedic side of Kanye that we see uh, every now and then. So, uh, yeah. So, oh my gosh, this whole thing was incredible. Uh, I loved kind of almost every second of the song um, for the most part. Uh, man. Man, that was good. Uh, there is a line I want to highlight uh, on Kanye's uh, final verse where he says, uh, I ain't delivering heavenly messages just for the hell of it. And also right after, uh, don't try to test me. I keep it clean, but I can get messy. So the first line, uh, I ain't delivering heavenly messages just for the hell of it. Uh, he got a lot of flack with Jesus is King that um, uh, like it was just a PR stunt or how long is he going to keep this up? And uh, it's just a facade kind of stuff. And uh, and you got a lot of flack too from the Christian side, um, where <laughs> he's done a lot of, I don't know, questionable stuff in the past and he's been uh, a little off the rails in other areas. But, um, so he's, he's kind of, he had kind of fire from both sides and he talked a lot about that in Jesus is King, but, um, he's just saying, I ain't delivering messages for the hell of it. Like it's, this is me, this is him. This is what, this is what he wants to do. And so I respect it for that. Uh, and also, uh, right after that, the don't try to test me. I keep it clean, but I can get messy. Uh, and how, uh, the Jesus is King did feel really clean. I would say clean and almost like cliche, uh, spiritual, if that makes sense. It, it really didn't feel like the like, uh, it was like a, definitely a gospel album, but it wasn't like, didn't feel like it was pure Kanye where these first couple tracks I've heard so far feel like pure Kanye where it's, he is, uh, not letting loose. Um, he's really just keeping it clean, like in terms of the lyrical narratives, what they're saying, uh, and they are bleeping out the swears, uh, at least Playboy and, uh, Five Yo are swearing sort of on their thing, but they just get rid of those, um, swear words, which I'm okay on. I'm yeah, I don't love it, but, uh, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. Um, yeah, it, I mean, in my personal opinion, if you're going to swear, I would just go for it. So I don't know why you would kind of make a clean version, but I get it. It does, it does make sense with this, uh, this first though, and it says I keep it clean, but I can get messy where it can be this kind of really polished stuff. And then there's a song like this where, uh, like messy is messiness in, in the sense that like the baseline is gritty and the production is brooding and, uh, Ooh, okay. Yeah. That whole law, that whole line, I think was just a, a, such a good, um, all encompassing, of this song so big fan big fan that might be one of my favorite Kanye tracks to date especially in recent years um that was just fire so I'm interested to see what the rest of this is we got another 23 songs to go so uh here's song number five this is a uh, hurricane <laughs> Okay, Hurricane, uh, that was the fifth track. Um, another solid track, another solid song. I'm really enjoying uh, what I'm hearing right now. Uh, the Weeknd, great, always a huge fan of The Weeknd, uh, a great uh, addition to this track, uh, big fan of what he was doing. Uh, I also really did enjoy that last section. Um where it did uh, kind of like cut out of his vocals and then kind of got a little like louder and then quieter and then it cut out and then it was more reverbed and uh, faded out. And I, I was a big fan of that kind of stuff. It only happened at the, the end and the beginning, but uh, I, I liked it. Um, I'm uh, I'm not the biggest uh, like mumble rap kind of fan. So uh, Lil Baby's verse was kind of just not it for me. I wasn't the hugest fan of that. And uh, that's, that's okay. There's, I think there's going to be a little bit more of that kind of stuff. Um, on this record, but, uh, it's not bad. Uh, Kanye's verse, I mean, kind of pretty much just blows little babies out of the water in my opinion. Uh, it's just another solid one. Uh, great lyricism, uh, great rhyme scheme, uh, great flow. I'm just like, who like this feels, this feels like a whole nother level other than Jesus is King. Like this, this really does feel like something special. Like just the <laughs> Jesus King had some really, uh, funky, uh, <laughs> uh, like rhyme schemes and where it was going it's flow wise was just a little weird here and there but this one feels like it's honed in and it's like it's it, he just knows what he wanted to do and this is it may have took him forever to do it all but it's uh it's all finally here so uh big ups for hurricane um so here we go the sixth track praise god <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, uh, praise God, uh, the sixth track. Um, I really liked, especially the first section. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't think this song resonated with me as much as some of the other songs did, uh, especially at the end. Uh, at the beginning, I thought it was really, really strong. Um, I love the addition of uh, Donda's uh, her own vocals in here, or not vocals, her reading a section, uh, and then how it, it can't always be night, and how Kanye uh, adds that into the last lines of the chorus. Um, I, I just think that's solid. Uh, I think that's honoring to Donda's legacy, and uh, I think something that she would have appreciated to be uh, to have her part of this track. I think obviously the whole thing is named after her, but um, I, yeah, I I think that's uh, I, I, it's solid. Um, I like Travis Scott's part. I didn't think it was too bad. Um, it was a little short, but uh, solid. Uh, I'm not the biggest Baby Keem fan. I've listened to a few of his songs before. Uh, and that last section where he just went really high and like whiny um, was really not for me. And I think that might, uh, this might be one of the songs that I play for the first little bit. And then when I get to that part, I just like skip it. And from that point on, I just listen to the rest of it. But uh, yeah. Uh, so solid song. I uh, didn't love the baby Keem part, but, uh, the first half was, uh, great. Um, was definitely, definitely up there. So, uh, again, and then just the production on this whole thing, uh, Kanye's killing it with the production here. This is, the stuff is just fire. Um, I'm loving, uh, what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, it just seems like it's really what Kanye wants to do. It feels like, um, if anything, it feels like a mix of like uh, maybe like a, a Jesus and Jesus is King in just the sense that it's like a, a an album about God uh, for the most part. And so uh, mixed with kind of the background production styles of more so at, I'm thinking like Jesus. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to hear more of this. So um, here we go. This is uh, next track, uh, Jonah. <laughs> Okay, uh, Jonah uh, is the seventh song, and we have finished that one. Listen to that now. Um, first of all, uh, I don't know why it's called Jonah. Uh, there's so much uh, about shoulder to lean on, which I think it should have been called. Um, I don't know. It doesn't need to be like that. Uh, what's the words? That blatantly spiritual by calling it Jonah. Um, uh, <laughs> there's really no section here uh, about Jonah, like, because the whole story of Jonah is someone that uh, disobeyed God and, and went through trials and uh, was swallowed by the giant fish and uh, and then spat out three days later and then went and um, did what God wanted after. And so uh, there's really, I mean, there's some hidden, like hints of that kind of narrative here and there, but uh, I would have just called this shoulder to lean on. I don't know why, uh, I don't know why it's called Jonah. Um, Song-wise, uh, Vori is not bad. Um, I, I haven't heard anything from Vori before. Uh, also, the only reason I know all of these artists, and I'm on the genius thing looking through uh, the lyrics, and so it says, like, who sings the chorus, who does the verses, that kind of stuff, and so uh, otherwise I would have not known, so... Uh, not bad. Uh, Vori stuff isn't too bad. This feels like one of the more uh, lighthearted kind of uh, emotional uh, stripped back kind of tracks. Um, just uh, especially with um, with what uh, Lil Dirk came in to say about uh, losing what a best friend and a brother, and uh, just to just to see. Yeah, this one just feels a little bit more of like a uh, a sad song, uh, a sad rap song, more emotionally driven uh, rap song, especially with just the voice being like, looks like um, uh, like who's here when I need the shoulder to lean on, just when when you're kind of down and out. I, who who is there for you? Who's really there for you in the end? And so um, I liked it. It wasn't bad. Uh, I this isn't like one of the. I don't think this is one of the more standout tracks of the record. I think this might be one of the more forgotten ones in my opinion. But uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe time will tell. But my guess is this would be one of the more uh, forgotten tracks of uh, the record, just because um, it's more one of the emotional, like laid back ones, like I've said before, but those ones often don't do uh, as well. They're not as talked about as often. So uh, who knows? But uh, here we go. Up next, we've got uh, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> OK. Uh, oh, OK, 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 OK. okay. Uh, okay. So this song, um, was a little bit of departure from, I think, what the rest of the album has been up to this point. Uh, it's been very, uh, either spiritually focused, emotionally focused, and 
this is just kind of like your bread and butter kind of just rap song, like your kind of hype rap song to some extent. And um, it, it's really not trying to say anything crazily. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, intelligent isn't the right word, but it's, it's not it's not really following the same trajectory that the rest of the album has up to this point of it being um, like this kind of posthumous Donda record or uh, honoring of her legacy type thing and it's spirituality and there just isn't like this is also the first time that uh Kanye swears on the album where they just bleep it out uh or they just get they just cut it uh and where he I don't think he did up to this point so yeah um this is just not one of my favorite ones here uh i like rap um but uh this is just uh it's like it's okay it's an okay song uh production is is good but it doesn't feel as um powerful or as uh crazy as um other stuff i'd listened to from this album so far so um yeah this is uh this is just kind of an okay one for me which is uh okay okay it's a weird it's a other departure from the rest of the project so yeah, that it is what it is, but we're going to move on to uh, Janya. Okay, so here's Janya. I don't know what Janya means, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, uh, Junya. Junya. Junya Watanabe is apparently a fashion designer, and he has, I believe, makes watches, is my guess. Um... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is a weird song to me. Um, this is probably my least favorite of anything I'd heard so far on the project. Um, it was weird. It, again, uh, the direction that the album took from this point on is, uh, feels like it's a little distance from what it, uh, is portrayed to be. Uh, like I've said of this spiritual Donda album. Uh, and so <laughs> it's like, this is just, uh, this is weird because this is all about like kind of money and uh, all about the the nice stuff he's got and um, I'm not sure what half the stuff means and like they repeat four or five summers a million times and even with the genius annotations I I don't understand it. Um, yeah, I <laughs> it's just a weird one, uh, a weird song, and then it's got the um, the production's got the like classic organ sound in the back too, and so it's it's like it's trying to keep its uh, <laughs> its thematic elements with that organ sound uh, all throughout that that is constant throughout this track, but um, <laughs> it just uh, uh, didn't didn't necessarily work for me, so um, I didn't hate it, but uh, it w- definitely wasn't one of my favorites. So uh, I don't think that'll be a very popular one in the future, but. Uh, uh, we'll have to see, but uh, we'll move on to the next song. Uh, Believe what I say. Okay, uh, believe what I say. Uh, that was a fun track. Uh, I definitely enjoyed that one a little bit more than some of the others. Uh, this is the kind of uh, Kanye that I appreciate or love a little bit more, where it's not as uh tell us rap focused if that makes sense uh it's the Kanye that is more production more just fun lighthearted song approach if that makes a lot of sense uh this sounds a lot like uh the the baseline feels a lot like uh fade was or faded um the i think it was the last song off of the life of pablo uh it sounded like that kind of same similar beat to me not as heavy as uh fade was or faded was but uh yeah it uh it was still a good kind of lighthearted song with um a fun little story by uh, Buju Banton, uh, and so uh, yeah, it's it's not doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh, Kanye talks about obviously a little bit of his problems early on in his first verse, but uh, yeah, it was a solid song. Uh, one that I find my I think it's really easy uh, easy to listen to, kind of put on in the background, like one of those just vibing songs. Like I can easily imagine myself um, out like on a beach day or something like that, listening to uh, this style of song. So. Uh, uh, I think this one may have some staying power uh, in the the wide scheme of uh, the music industry. I, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think this one may have some, it's either it's going to be one of the more forgotten tracks of the uh, LP or it's going to be kind of the one of the, just the background ones that's easy for anyone to listen to or anyone to uh, kind of get going with. So yeah, believe what I say. I enjoyed it. I was a fan. So uh, let's move on to track number 11. We're still not even halfway uh, with the uh, song 24. Direction. 
Okay, uh, 24. Um, this is the, uh, it's got the Sunday Service Choir in it, the first of the album to have the Sunday Service Choir. And um, yeah, uh, it, I, it's interesting because this doesn't really fit with either projects right now, I feel like. It feels a little, it feels more Don like than uh, Jesus King was, but it feels uh, more Jesus King-like than the rest of this Dondo is. I hope that makes sense. It, um, you can tell he's utilizing this, the, the Sunday Service Choir so differently, or so much differently in this project than he did with Jesus is King, where Sunday Service Choir was uh, so uh, was almost like the focal point of that album, that record, where it was uh, they were there to be the the main driving force behind uh, the choir operatic sections and and they were such a strong focal point of that project where this one they're not that they showed up for the first time in uh, 11 songs and so uh, and even the way he's just processing their vocals and mixing them all together rather than it feels like a um, rather than it feel feeling like a choir sound a big uh, big room sound it's more honed in and it feels like um, like it could have been sung by maybe like eight people just with layered vocals and stuff so um, not bad uh, I, I didn't love it. Uh, it, it. I was still very, very churchy, it felt like, with the, that uh, that grand organ uh, throughout the song, just like it was on one of the past ones. I can't remember which one that was, but um, not bad. Uh, I wouldn't find myself really going back to this one ever. Uh, it's, it's not really a... It's interesting because it's not really a worship song uh, like Jesus King was intended to be or like a gospel worship album, something that you could uh, praise to. Uh, and it's it's not really like a, a like a rap song like the rest of this Donda stuff is so far. So it's 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 riding this weird middle line, which I'm not sure I'm not sure how I feel about it at this point. So uh, it, it's definitely interesting that he's the last two tracks for this one were uh, a little more less focused like this. But this kind of feels like a reframing of uh, the rest of the project going forward. We'll see if the next song is uh, any similar to this or has any more semblance of uh, the kind of spiritualness of Kanye's new new identity in of sorts and where uh, it seemed like he was going with this so uh yeah we're gonna go to the next song uh this is uh remote control <laughs> Okay, uh, remote control. Uh, <laughs> a little more of an interesting track here, uh, and it, it appears from this point on the song is going to be a little more quicker uh, in this midsection. So uh, maybe this is the more throwaway-ish tracks. Um, not that songs are throwaways necessarily, but just because they're in the middle of the album and uh, the first half felt like it had a cohesive. Uh, thematic elements and production style and what it wanted to do and the, and from this point on it's, it's get, starting to feel a little more messy um which uh <laughs> you would think would show up a lot earlier with the 27 song album which is absolutely nuts but uh remote control uh i thought it was okay there wasn't anything crazy about the song the beat was not bad uh there was a nice little whistle interlude in the middle uh he is kind of poking fun at people getting suspicious about his uh, i guess his love life early at the beginning with um at the very beginning line uh, uh please don't ask again who's in the van they're my only fans um so yeah uh <laughs> this is not my style of rap uh or not my style of i guess kanye in that sense um it just yeah it, it was fun it was lighthearted. it didn't have a, a whole ton going on for me and so uh this song was uh more or less forgettable in my opinion so uh, we're going to move on to the next song, though. Uh, we've got uh, Moon. So uh, here we go. This is Moon. Okay, Moon. Um, uh, it seems like it's an interlude-ish style track. Um, it, it's very calm uh, and mellow, and it just... Um, it's just like a almost serene, yeah, just like kind of a relaxing, just like a, yeah, just like, hmm, just, just reacting to just chilling out to it. And um, so <clears throat> other than that, uh, I, I liked Kid Cudi's uh, verse in here. Uh, it matches, I think, with his style a lot or very well, I should say. 
And um, uh, in that chorus section at the end with uh, Don Tolliver, Kanye, and Kid Cudi, all their vocals are kind of intertwined and layered on top of each other. And I really liked it. It felt really smooth and slick. And it just felt like um, it was almost like uh, nectar for the ears a little bit. It was just like really, really uh, calming. And it just felt like, ooh, and it was layered perfectly. And Really? Yeah, I'm surprised I like that fan, or blah, blah, blah. I'm a fan of this more than I expect it to be. I, I like this more than um, I thought I would, I think, especially realizing it was a fairly quick song with um, not a ton going on, I would say. Uh, it's the quickest song other than the first one to, uh, up to this point um, at 2 minutes and 36 seconds, but we're going into another 2 minute 25 and 208 song. So uh, we'll see how those go. But um, this does feel like the very natural halfway point to the project. This is the, uh, that was the 13th of 27 songs. So technically the moment that I'm uh, talking right now yes right now in between these two songs of moon and heaven and hell are the is the middle point so um yeah halfway done the project uh and i'm liking it i'm a fan of the project so far i'm really intrigued to see how the back half is going to go so uh here is heaven and hell okay uh heaven and hell Ooh, that song was uh, dark, brooding, gritty. It had a great bass line uh, instrumental in the back half of the track after uh, the outro. Um, it's a really quick song here. Uh, just It kind of feels like Kanye just ranting for a second here of um, just so much. He talks about uh, not wanting promos and photos and then talks about him with uh, his relationship with Kim for a little bit and then just uh, just tell him just tell him the devil to stand down right away, and it's just ambitious and in your face, and uh, hoo, 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 I liked it. I really did. Uh, it was one of those quick hits of that's just like ooh, just yeah, just energy the whole time. Uh, just a powerful song, and um, there's a part here where uh, I'm I'm seeing from Genius that he interpolates the uh, uh, heaven and hell is on earth uh, by the 20th century band. Um, I think I think I know what that um, uh, sound is normally, but uh, he used it in that last uh, verse uh, and processes it quite a bit and uh, extends the line out and oh, it just sounds so good. Uh, that last section um of his verse i just really really enjoyed uh so big ups for heaven and hell that was a solid track uh that i i really much enjoyed so uh here we go up next though is uh is donda wow uh donda um the first track to give me real shivers. Uh, that was a powerful song. Uh, it was spoken word for the most part from Donda. And um, it is so uh, timely. Uh, the fact that um, I don't know where this original clip comes from. Oh, never mind. It's clipped from uh, uh, an address at the Chicago Statue University, recorded in 2007. Um, speech celebrating the life and works of a renowned poet and writer, Gwendolyn Brooks, uh, who had turned 90 in 2007 so wow okay um <laughs> so uh even though this had nothing to do with um or what's the word uh oh yeah it, it just seems so timely that you can place an excerpt from that uh speech into this song and it just feels so um just right for this moment uh just the beginning like it feels so good to be home and just how that uh, can be seen as Donda saying, I'm, I'm in heaven, like I'm home. And I'm, it just feels so good to be there. And thank you for all the support and all this stuff. And it, talk about generations and generations. And so it just, it's worked so well with this track. Um, and the part that that was this, the, those last two lines and then going into the, uh, that chorus, the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And it's just, wow. Um, I was, uh, I was a fan. So, uh, it definitely wasn't like a song song. You know what I mean? It wasn't one of those, like, it, it felt like an interlude ish of type part, but, um, it was great. Uh, spoken word part was phenomenal. I, wow. 
Um, that was one of the ones that you don't listen to in a uh, like by yourself, really. But um, as soon as uh, it comes on in the album, when you're listening to it all the way through, it's like, whoa, whoa. So Donda, I was impressed with that one. Uh, it was short, but it had me hooked the whole time. And I think it didn't overstay its stay. So um, big fan. So uh, here we go. Uh, Keep My Spirit Alive, the 16th track. This is already... Uh, a lot more than most albums would have, <laughs> but uh, here we go. Okay, uh, keep my spirit alive. Uh, I was a fan of that track, although I didn't think it was overly uh, impressive or crazy. It was a little more uh, on the spiritual side of it. Uh, obviously, the song is called "Keep My Spirit Alive," so uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but uh, yeah, like it, it, I think this is what uh, if there was a whole album of this, this is what I think Jesus King was. Um, supposed to be if that makes sense or what he was really trying to go for uh it's not as a worshipy song and it's more of like a a mix between rap and or i guess cloud rap and like a uh, a worship gospel style and so this is probably i'd say uh the best blending of the two styles of kanye's like old classic style of rap and the gospel worship stuff they want to do. I think this is the uh, the best fusion of that I think I've heard um, in a little bit. Obviously, there's stuff like Ultralight Beam, which I think is just his best uh, worshipy gospel album he's ever put out, um, or at least with those kind of thematics. But um, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> it's similar. It's a little more, a little more laid out, a little more, or a little, what's the word? A little more chilled out, a little more laid back. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's just a solid track. Nothing too crazy about it. Nothing too, uh, phenomenal, just a good track. But, um, next one, uh, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, Jesus Lord, a nine minute song, Jesus Lord, nine minutes. So, uh, here we go. <laughs> Okay, uh, really interesting song. Um, so this feels like a grand finale. This feels like a we're done. This is your we're over. It's kind of the the climax of the LP. Um, with 17 songs in it, it feels like it could have been. So maybe uh, maybe these last um, <laughs> 10 songs or nine songs were um, added on later. I don't know. But uh, yeah, this feels like a, a climactic finale uh, of a song. Um, I love the first bit. Uh, it's long. It's obviously long. It's nine minutes. Uh, and so I, I really did like a lot of the first part. I loved, um, Kanye's verse. He's talking a lot about, uh, growing up as sort of, and, um, having it hard early on in the days. And yeah, it just, there's lots of tragedy here and, and just lots of, um, struggle that is portrayed. And, um, uh, Jay Electronica's verse is fire as well. Uh, I loved what he brought in. Uh, he brought in a lot of, um, uh, cool wordplay with uh some place names and all that kind of stuff and um loved what he had to say about quite a quite a few stuff of just what he's saying about like even uh like christ throne and the sword and microphone kind of stuff and uh yeah the final line about the last days of sodom and gomorrah outside and and how that's a metaphor for um society right now i guess and so um Great. It was a solid, solid uh, first half of the song, I would say, um, and, a, and a very interesting finale. So um, the finale uh, is has the voiceover of um, Larry Hoover Jr., who uh, I, I read about it as the song was going on and um, and... Yeah, so it's uh, I guess his his father Larry Hoover, Hoover Senior was a, uh, a a leader, the leader, the former leader and founder of the street gang, the Gangsters Disciples. From Chicago, and so he's he's serving, I believe, six life sentences in prison right now. And so, um, it's interesting because uh, the first half of this, it feels like a, it's a phone call uh, to Kanye in after he went to the Oval Office uh, and met with Trump, and um, I guess uh, pleaded for Larry Hoover Senior's um, release from prison and that kind of stuff. And so, uh, that was a very uh, polarizing moment in uh, Kanye's history, I would say, in in all of what he did, but. Um, Regardless of what, how you think about that whole 
MAGA stuff with Kanye and his um, run for or his bid for presidency, whatever. Uh, very interesting. The first half of this kind of thing from Larry Hoover Jr. is um, uh, very emotional, very touching. Uh, talks a lot about how uh, the father will never be able to see their or his grandfather will never be see the ever be able to see their grandkids and uh how they keep telling him that he'll be released over time and all that kind of stuff and so uh but in the end it was uh um i don't want to say it feels like a, an advertisement i don't know how i feel about it it's um uh i realized at the end this is uh this is the movement now this the song is the start of a i'm sure a larger movement to get uh larry uh sorry what's his name larry hoover senior released from prison so um I get it, and so I get why Kanye would have added this in the end, and so uh, we'll see if that movement uh, has anything. From what I know, uh, he still appears to be in jail, uh, and so this will be interesting to see if there's any bigger movement for uh, him now that this song is released, um, but I guess only time will tell, but yes, definitely felt like a grand climactic finale of a, uh, of, a of the project, of the whole album, even though it's not. Uh, there's still like what 10 songs to go so uh here is uh here's new again here is the next track okay uh new again uh a little more funky of a track it feels a little more uh brighter and lighter than anything else on this project especially going from jesus is lord to this song so uh it feels a lot like a uh repentance style track um something similar or uh again one of those kind of hybrid ones that feels like it's a mix between um this kind of more donda style and uh, jesus is king and so i i like the kind of hybrid style um it, yeah uh chris brown on the chorus um, Kanye's worked with Chris over and over again, and so, um, <laughs> Chris doesn't seem to be the, the greatest of humans, uh, from what we've heard in the media about him and all that kind of stuff, and, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, I mean, apart from that, uh, he is saying, uh, Chris Brown's thing is saying, make me new again, I repent for everything I'm gonna do again, um, which is... Yeah, like that's a that's that's a that's a thing, and so um, it's such an interesting line to cross, uh, even with Kanye, because uh, f faith is based and founded on grace. The idea that we don't deserve anything, any grace that we're given, we don't deserve um, to even live. Uh, that we've sinned so much in our lives that we should be sentenced to death immediately, and so um, it's only because of. Uh, Jesus who died on the cross for our sins that we can have life and we can we can, we can live off of grace and so um yeah and so it's interesting uh, I know there was some stuff earlier about uh DeBaby and I was at Marilyn Manson coming on stage for one of the Donda tours or one of the Donda shows um I did see news about that and so uh, it's interesting that uh it, it's it, it's a, such a fine line um to walk uh especially com me coming from like a faith background of of being do we give grace for things that they've done in the past because we we've been given grace and um all sins are equal in the eyes of the lord and so it's just like yeah it's just such an interesting line to walk of of is there need there, there obviously needs to be some repentance in some areas about um and recognition of what was wrong and stuff and so um although the baby and Marilyn manson haven't shown up on this record so far so i wonder if they will show up later but um yeah Chris Brown, not, not the greatest of humans or whatever, but um, I mean, neither am I. So, uh, yeah. Song-wise, again, uh, it, it is just, uh, yeah, I want to re reassure that it's a, a fun kind of track um, that is very uh, more spiritually focused, uh, apart from some, some of the other songs on this uh, album, especially with the Sunday Service Choir. And I just I just love the repeated lines of make me new again, make me new again, and how um, affirming and, uh, yeah, just how affirming it is also, just of something you just want to chant out over and over again of just make me new again, make me new again, make me new again, regardless of what you've done or what you will do in the past or in the future, so. Uh, yeah, solid song. Uh, let's move into uh, Tell the Vision. Uh, okay, Tell the Vision. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know why this song exists on this project. I don't know why. It's already so long. I don't know why the song needs to be here. So uh, apparently uh, this is a... Um, uh, an alternate version of the original track called Tell the Vision, uh, which was, had Kanye and Pusha T on it. 
And uh, it was apparently produced by Kanye, and then Pop Smoke uh, died, so it was posthumously released, and so this is a remix of it. Um, I, I don't know why it's here. I don't know why it's on this. Uh, I... <laughs> I uh, the vocal feels weird. Uh, the the minor like piano sound is dun 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 dun. The type of thing just felt uh, ominous and weird, and I don't know why it exists. And yeah, to me the song, yeah, to me I don't know why the song's here. I don't know why it's here, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why the song is here, but it is. So <laughs> we're gonna move on to the next one. I felt like this was pretty useless, but uh, here we go. Uh, Lord, I need you. Okay, uh, Lord, I need you. Uh, another oddly titled name or oddly titled song. I don't know why it's called Lord, I need you because um, this is really just his uh, relationship with Kim and his. Yeah, and the rumored divorce, and um, he's reminiscing on the good times that they had, uh, and also recognizing that she was there for all, like the listening party kind of stuff, and there's still some love there, but also uh, the guns off safety and speak first, don't break me kind of thing, and harsh words are angry, uh, but then said, Lord, don't take me. So, I mean, I guess it's the metaphor there in that last line of the verse is about um, the words feeling like uh, like bullet fire or machine gun fire. So, um, yeah, I mean, the last part, it does say, Lord, I need you wrap your arms around me. And so I get that it's um, I, I mean, I guess the the title of the song, but it's just like it feels like just that last section is about um Lord, I, I need you, or some I think like that. It, when you hear this, the the title, Lord, I need you, you s- suspect it's like some uh, more gospel centric song, but um, no, it's just saying that uh, stuff not doing, not going great with Kim, all that kind of things, and surrounding that, we don't know the intricate layers of all that kind of stuff, but uh, and how, yeah, they just need to. Uh, he just needs to. He needs the Lord right now, I guess. So, um, okay, song. It's not. Uh, I'm not over the moon about it. I. I don't hate it. Uh, it's. But, um, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of there. Just kind of there. Feels like it's just there. So, uh, here we go with our next song. Uh, this is uh, Pure Souls. <laughs> Okay, uh, Pure Souls, um, another song that I like, but I'm not like absolutely on fire for. Yeah, there's, uh, <laughs> it felt like it maybe went a little long, especially with that last portion with, the last portion with um, Chen Xia. Uh, it felt like it, it kind of just dragged a little bit, maybe too much, but uh, not a bad song. Uh, this is, again, it feels a lot like, um, there's a very much, how do I describe it? Uh this album so far, or the majority of it, is a great uh, blending of Kanye's uh, older like style, or his normal style, I would say, uh, with Jesus is King. Uh, and it's a lot less um, worship gospel focused, and it feels more like a rap song that has a spiritual uh, emphasis or sp- spiritual thematics to it. And so uh, I like that. I, I do like that. Uh, I think it's way better than what Jesus King was, uh, even though it's different context. It's not like a worship, that one was like a worshipy album, but um, uh, Roddy Rich is okay here. I haven't listened to a ton of Roddy Rich in, uh, in the past, but, um, not bad. Uh, Kanye's verse is, is pretty good too. And so, um, this is, this is one just felt like a, because it was so long, it felt like it, uh, yeah, it didn't really have that oomph or that real, didn't back a whole big punch for me, I think. And so, uh, in the end I thought it was, uh, I thought it was just kind of a, just a good song. Uh, and that might, that may be my, my common themes for the whole project so far. Uh, it all feels like a good stuff, but it's not like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing ever. It's not like, um, um, yeah, so uh, I, I I felt I loved the, the first half of this project a lot more than this back half at this point, um, but uh, we'll have to see. I need to obviously give everything a little bit more time, but uh, we got another longer song, which I do generally like longer songs, so uh, I'm excited to hear this. So uh, here we go. This is uh, Come to Life. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, uh, come to life. Uh, that was one of the better uh, spiritual slash gospel focused tracks on this album, I think. Um, it felt very serene and uh, like it was almost like glistening. The whole song felt like it was just very, very bright and light, which I used for another song, but this one is r- really more so that. And uh, I liked it. I-, I liked it quite a bit. Uh, there was a lot of obviously metaphors here and a lot going on talking about his um, uh, what appears to be like some manic or genius episodes where he's going in and he's just like writing down some of his best stuff and how he should have penciled it in and wrote it in pen and that kind of stuff and uh, how <laughs> he wants to put aside his was uh, put aside his own selfish ambitions uh, for what uh, his family wants or something about like how North wants Nikes when um, Kanye's an Adidas guy. And so, uh, yeah, like uh, this is a good song. Um, I can see myself going back and listening to this uh, quite a few times. Uh, it, it feels, it feels like almost like a ballad. I would say in some areas, it feels very uh, ballad like uh, it, it, it is. Yeah. It's a it's a solid song that is is very not doesn't feel like super rappy, um, which is uh, good and I like my Kanye like that a little bit here and there. So big fan, big fan of Come to Life. We'll see. Uh, obviously, I need to give all this some more time, some more processing time, thinking about it all some more, and to see what my final final thoughts and everything. But this is my initial reaction stuff. So uh, here we go. Uh, no child left behind is next, and um, so this is interesting. After the song, there are four uh, part twos. And so um, this, my guess is this might be the finale-esque type style song where the next four kind of our bonus tracks um, would be my guess or how I would have or how I perceive it right now. So we'll see. Uh, But uh, here's No Child Left Behind. Okay, so, um, you know, I I think I was sort of right about this feeling like it was the... Uh, finale. Like, I felt like it was a final track of the whole LP, the whole record. Um, It wasn't as grandioso as I think I may have suspected it to be. Uh, I did have a nice, uh, some nice key sound, a nice synth that was just um, constantly being held, almost to imitate uh, that of, like, an organ, it felt like, and uh, it was, it was good. It, there wasn't a ton going on. Uh, there's just constant themes of no child left behind and he's done miracles on me. But, um, other than that, it wasn't anything too crazy. And so, uh, it, it feels like a good bookend chapter end mark of the whole thing that wraps it all in a nice uh, little bow tie. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, that was, uh, it, it, it was good. I don't think it's one that people would really go back to and, uh, listen over and over again, uh, or especially not in like a singular listening experience, but, um, as a finale to the whole thing, I think it's pretty good, but, um, but that's the thing. Uh, it's not the finale. It is not. There are four songs left, uh, with jail. Okay. Okay. Junior or Junior and Jesus Lord part two, all of them part two. So, uh, here we go. My guess is these are just kind of remix parts of the originals. And, uh, these four songs are a little more single esques. And so, uh, these are going to be interesting. So, uh, here we go. This is a uh, jail part two. Okay, uh, it's jail part two. Um, so this is going to be a controversial song for sure. Uh, so earlier I talked about um, I, the, there was controversy about the baby and uh, Marilyn Manson. I, I, I don't. I, I so I was not involved in all. At I didn't read anything about it. Um, or for I would not in depth. Uh, my understanding is that I believe DeBaby said some homophobic stuff, and Marilyn Manson uh, well is known for being quite the uh, eccentric thing or per- thing person. I believe he had some sexual abuse allegations against him, and so, um, uh, yeah. So this is just an interesting song. It's pretty much the original song, um, like Jail. Just uh, like I think the the back track is the exact same, just the different. Uh, vocalists over different sections and so um yeah you know interesting uh i my guess is myself and uh, a lot of people will just listen to the original i think or the, the original the the part one uh, i think the first one is way better as well um the <laughs> baby's uh uh from what i know the baby's 
the verses here, his lyrics, um, they still feel very uh, non-apologetic for what he had said. And it feels like he's just trying to write what he said with other stuff that's saying he grew up in the slums kind of thing. And yeah, whatever. So um, yeah, so that's uh, that's an interesting song. Uh, I'm really intrigued to hear your guys' thoughts on that one as well, uh, just because that one has a lot of... Uh, yeah, that'll be an interesting song to think about and hear about and hear people's opinions about. So, uh, here we go with the next song. <laughs> We're just going to avoid that one. Uh, this is OK, OK, part two. So, uh, here we go. OK, uh, OK, part two. Um, yeah, you know, I thought the song was, was good. Uh, it, from what I can tell, the only difference is the addition of, uh, Shen Sia as the second verse instead of Lil Yachty. And, uh, from what I can remember, I, I did like the Lil Yachty verse, but I didn't think it was amazing. And, uh, I do like the Shen Sia verse here. So, um, I would probably listen to this over the original, or I guess the, the part one, um, from what I can tell, this and Jail Part 2 are both just the same original song, just with, like, different vocals, or just, yeah. Uh, and so there really isn't a whole ton different that I can really tell. Uh, I think it's literally just the verse, and because I like the verse here, I think Shinsia's vocals work better with the song, Lily than better than Lil Yachty did, uh, just in terms of, uh, it's got a, her, it's got some Jamaican dialect, I think it's called pa Patios. Um, and so uh, I like it. It works better with the beat, uh, the production, the kind of um, low hits there, I think were better than uh, Lil Yachty's kind of weird kind of phoned in vocals, it seems like. Um, but yeah, uh, so that is uh, that is OK part two. I, I think I would probably listen to that over the uh, original or the part one. Um, but uh, we've got two songs left. Uh, here is uh, Janya part two. <laughs> Okay, uh, Junior Part 2. Uh, so, from what I understand this song, I'm going to read the genius thing. It says, um, uh, sh shortens Kanye's verse, extends Playboy Cardi's verse, and adds Ty Dolla Sign. Um, <laughs> I could not, I mean, I only listened to the original once and this Part 2 once as well. So, uh, I really couldn't tell a huge difference between the two songs. Um, Ty Dolla Sign, I think, is... Uh, is okay is okay i try to pay a little more attention to his verse and i thought it was just um it was just good uh didn't blow me away i'm not the like the craziest ty dollar sign fan or whatever and so i thought it was just uh sort of just meh or sort of just there and so um both this and the original i i don't think uh were too crazy for me um they weren't uh insane but uh yes yeah uh, also note uh my light probably just changed a little bit because uh, I have two lights, but they both died, even though I'm charging the other one when I'm using the other one, because I've been recording for like two and a half hours already, almost three hours. Um, just how long it takes to record all this stuff. The album's crazy long and my camera can only record 30 seconds or 30 minutes at a time. And so blah, blah, blah. But we're here. We've made it. The final, final song, Jesus Lord Part 2. Uh, I'm excited. We're going to conclude the album right now. Okay. Oh, finally, it's all done. Um, Jesus Lord part two. Uh, so I did say earlier that, uh, that song felt like it was a finale song and, um, I thought it should have been at the end. Um, and here it is. Here it is actually at the end uh, with uh, pretty much the only difference is there's just an extended part after J Electronica with uh, the three people from The Locks, I believe, uh, is what their name is. So it's um, Sheik Louch, uh, Jada Kiss, and Styles P. So three extra verses uh, in between J Electronica and then the chorus and then that uh, Larry Hoover outro. Um, uh, so if this is just an extended mix and it's not anything different than the original, why have the original is my question. Um, like it's already a nine minute song. So is the extra two and a half minutes really going to uh, like 
throw people away or throw people off the song. Kanye's not one to shy away from longer songs. So, uh, yeah, I, I just don't know why the original was here. If this song is just the same thing, just extended, there's no like change in vocals or something like that or change in vocalists. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I liked it. I thought it was a great grand finale style track. I thought it was, um, just, I love the chanting of Jesus Lord, just over and over again, all throughout. I just, I was a big fan of it. Um, I, again, Jay Electronica's vocals are great. Uh, I, I, I liked his verse, I think the most more than anyone's Kanye's is still good too, but, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Um, that's it. That's it. That's the whole album. That is Donda. It is finally out. I have done the reaction to it. Ooh, okay. It feels like I got through a grind of this so much so that my lights died. I had to go get other stuff at one point and why? Wow, wow. It's just been crazy. But, um, yeah. Uh, final thoughts though. So album is finally done. What do I think of the project? Uh, better than Jesus is King by far. I think it's miles, miles stronger than Jesus is King, which I actually did enjoy quite a bit, uh, but I guess they were very different, uh, albums and where they were trying to go directionally. Uh, that one, Jesus King was more spiritual slash, uh, worship slash, um, uh, I can't remember the word I'm thinking of gospel. And so it was just a little different. This is more like, a feels like a real rap album. This one, um, I liked it. Uh, I didn't think there was a crazy amount of uh, like standout singles, I would say. Uh, I think Off the Grid was my my favorite, and then I guess Jesus Lord Part 2. Um, uh, I also did like, uh, was it the, f uh, no, not, okay. uh, yeah, the first OK OK, I think it was. Um, was it that one? I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Um, oh, Jail. I like the first Jail. Uh, I think more than anything. Um, the first half felt uh, a lot stronger than that last half, uh, I would say. And uh, I don't know if it needed to be this long. It was a little ridiculously long, uh, being uh, an hour and 48 minutes. Uh, but uh, yeah, there were some tracks I think that didn't need to be on there like that. Um, what was it? The uh, What was it? Uh, Tell, the Wit Tell the Vision. Uh, and then the first um, Jesus Lord, I, I don't think they needed to be on there. There were a few others that I, I think were just okay. Um, but it's what kind of wanted to put out. We finally got it. I mean, we got it, so I should just be happy. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was it. Um, I don't. If I had to give it a score right now, I would. I'm probably thinking between a seven and eight or something similar, or something around that. I need to obviously give it some more uh, thought, and I need to listen to everything a little bit more. Uh, do another listening through, or at least another couple listens through to really think about what I think of the projects in terms of my final, final locked in thoughts, but. Um, but I'm trying something interesting. Uh, I'm going to look up, uh, so album of the year I love using, uh, and I think it's great. And I'm going to, uh, have not seen, I don't know anything about this. I don't know what people are saying about this. Uh, I'm going to see, I'm going to click right now and see what people's opinions are on this record. Um, I have no idea at this point if people love it, if they hate it. My guess is they're going to like it. My guess is it's going to currently be at a score of like a 80 to 85. So I'm going to say like an 83, uh, just because things are often a little higher at the beginning uh, than they are um, at the end, just because everyone that comes in, they want to rate it right away that they like that all the Kanye hardcore fans or all the hardcore fans and artists wants to go and instantly rate it really high. And so they always say it's really, really high off the bat. Um, and so my guess is it's going to be like an 83 score right now on album of the year. Uh, and my guess is it might land in the mid seventies. My guess is this is like a, a 75 out of a hundred kind of record that I think it will land on for the most part for most people, which is uh, right in the middle of what I have, I think uh, 70 to 80. So uh, I'm going to click album of the year uh, and we'll see what uh, people think of it right now. Um, okay. So, uh, it has a 79 user score. It's been rated by 900 people and it's at a 79. So I was a little generous to it in that sense, but, uh, I guess I rated a little too high. I think it's going to come down a little bit from there. Uh, critic reviews. I'm not going to really talk about right now. It's got 63 technically from critics, but there's only four people that have critiqued it. But can you really do a real critic review when it's been out for so little time? I mean, sure. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that was Donda. That was Kanye West's Donda. It's finally here. 
it's finally out and now I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, what do you think about this project? Uh, this was such a long video to put together and it probably isn't going to be that long because it's just going to be my talking through it. And so, uh, yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section below. I wore my all black for this video and tried a different setup a little bit. I'm not sure if I like it. Uh, the light turned off and so it sounds great now, but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, I've been Bowtied Media and I will see you guys in another video. Thank <laughs> you.